We've all heard it a thousand times. Shooting in RAW gives you the best possible image because it gives you the most dynamic range and the most editing flexibility, etc. While this is pretty much true and it's a good rule of thumb to shoot RAW for most photography situations, it's not a good idea to shoot RAW for every shoot. On occasion, I'll shoot sports photography. Sports are obviously fast paced activities with very brief opportunities to get the perfect shot. This requires you to shoot at a very high frame rate so that you have the best chance of capturing these athletes in their peak moments. Since these games can take hours and I'm shooting my Canon R5 at 20 frames per second, I'm gonna rack up thousands of photos really quickly. And as we all know, raw photos take up a lot of memory on your SD cards. It also takes longer to write these raw files to your memory card and can even cause your camera to pause during the action because it's writing all these photos. Also, when you upload these raw photos into Lightroom or whatever editing software you use, it's going to take longer to render previews of these raw files for you to sift through and make selects from. This can end up wasting a ton of time when you're looking through thousands of photos. Sounds like a bit of a headache, doesn't it? Now this is where I propose my alternative solution to shooting raw, JPEG. Yes, the dreaded JPEG. How could any good photo ever start off as a JPEG? Well, um, film photos are technically JPEGs if you think about it. So I guess not all JPEGs are bad. Anyway, here's why shooting JPEG is a good alternative. First off, JPEGs come out as a smaller image file, but you can still have the same resolution as your RAW file. This means over thousands of photos, you'll end up saving a lot more memory on your SD card. As a bonus, this means your SD card won't have to work as hard to write these photo files to the card, and that could end up letting you get better shots because your camera's not freezing up every few seconds. You will also save a lot of time during the selection process because you won't be waiting on your computer to render a bunch of previews for raw photos. And nobody wants to spend any more time than they have to sifting through photos. Now here's a spicy tip that I'm gonna give you and it's a real YouTube exclusive. We all know that JPEGs don't edit as well as RAWs, but there is a workaround to that and that is setting your camera's picture profile. Most people have the picture profile on their camera set to standard or the default setting and never think twice about it. But what if you could change your camera's color profile to be similar to how you edit your photos? Now <laughs> that's a good idea. Can we get a like on this video for that spicy tip? You are only getting this on YouTube, it's not on my Instagram or anywhere else. I'll even show you how I've set my picture profile on my camera as an example. Here we are in the Canon R5 menu, and if you use a Canon camera, this is gonna look pretty much the same for all Canon cameras. So to find picture profile, we're gonna go over to number three, and it's actually called picture style. Once you open up the picture style menu, it's gonna be set to standard, and to make our own custom picture style. We're gonna go down to user defined and I've already made my custom profile there. So we'll do it again on user def2. Um, so we're gonna hit info and you can start with a base picture style to base your custom profile on. And I think neutral gives the most natural looking colors. Standard tends to make things a little more red and contrasty, uh, you know, which is pretty typical of Canon pictures, but um, we're gonna go with neutral. I like to do the sharpening in camera just because I don't like sharpening JPEGs after the JPEG has already been rendered. It just doesn't look as good. And then because I'm on Canon, I'm gonna lower that contrast all the way down. You know, when you lower contrast, that's going to reduce the saturation in your picture. So I'm gonna bring that back up to, let's say two, and we'll leave the color tone at zero. And that's going to be my custom picture style that I'll use for shooting JPEG. Now, once you've got your picture profile set, you can still edit and add some color grades to the JPEGs. It's not like they're set in stone forever. And you won't have to do, honestly, as much editing because you already start off with a good base with that picture profile. Now that you've got your picture profile set, you're ready to fire off thousands of photos on end without a care in the world. Well, maybe you should care about your white balance because if that's not right, your JPEGs are gonna be screwed up. Now, let me be clear. Let me be clear. I'm not saying you should replace your raw photos with JPEG. RAWs are amazing for 90% of your photography scenarios and I always have my raw photos enabled anyway. I just have it write both RAWs and JPEGs to my card. It's nice to have that backup if I need more editing flexibility than anticipated. I have a CF Express card, so I don't have to worry about waiting on my camera to write because the speeds are really fast, but if you have a slower memory card, then you should do some tests before you go out on a paid shoot and find out your camera can't write both files fast enough. In short, 
If you're gonna be shooting a lot of photos, switch to JPEG. It'll make your life so much easier and save you so much time. Now, if this video helped you out, please consider subscribing so you can learn some more new things because you know, it never hurts to learn new things. Also, if you want to see more of my work, my Instagram is linked below. I'll see y'all next time.